Beautiful human beings, you are back for another episode of Three Shots and Three Stories. If you are new here, you're probably like, uh, what the hell is this? This is Andrea taking three shots of alcohol and telling you three stories that have happened in my life. And sometimes you're gonna laugh, sometimes you're gonna be like, that was the stupidest story I've ever heard in my life. And then there's other times you're gonna cry and be like, oh my God, yes, I feel you. I've been there, but for the most part, I really try to make you guys laugh and not cry because that would be no fun. So today we are going to be drinking Bacardi Gold because your girl loves rum. I know I said I don't drink a lot, but if I have to drink something, this girl right here is gonna be drinking rum. Rum and tequila. Either or really works for me. As always, I write it down on my little piece of paper just so I don't forget. Um, we're going to be talking about the embarrassing moment I had with my upstairs neighbor not too long ago. Let me tell you, I really hope that nobody's watching me because this guy's gonna be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was you, I'm gonna be like, yep, that was me. Uh, and then there was another story, hold on, I, I've written a couple, but we're gonna just do three, remember. Uh, this one was about the time that I had started at a job, not too long into my job, and I was responsible for children, and the child broke his arm. It's a very good one, trust me. It was very nerve wracking for me, but you'll get some enjoyment out of that one. And then the last one, or we'll put it in whatever order, is the time that I found my neighbor and I thought he was dead. I know, I know, the things that have happened in my life, I just, I get enjoyment from just speaking about it. So let's not waste any more time. Let's cue the intro and begin. beautiful humans it is a little windy so if there's a lot of wind interference I apologize it's just that your girl does not have the money for a better equipment right now so if you hear the breeze just make believe that you are feeling the breeze with me and I don't know what else to tell you okay okay so before we get started I'm just letting you guys know that I am in a bit of a hurry today why am I in a hurry because my best friend is here from out of town and I have to go so instead of me taking the shot and telling the story taking the shot and slowly getting drunk no, no, I'm gonna just get tipsy, drunk in the beginning and then try to tell you guys the story, which I think might be even more entertaining for you guys. So let's begin. Bacardi, should we smell it? Oh yeah, baby. Mm. Memories, that smells like Mexico. My Mexico memories, or my Punta Cana memories. Hey. Look, since you guys keep complaining about the shot glass sizing and oh my God, is she really taking that much? Yes, it's not Coca-Cola. So anyways, cheers. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Do I really like rum that much? Ooh. Hold on, I normally get it with like a Coke. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't know if I can get through three of those. My mouth is salivating. <laughs> oh, Andrea. I had to do it like under the word Vancouver because oh, I hope I don't die just taking three straight shots. Um, I did have food before this just so that I can stay alive. I almost gagged. I almost gagged. We're gonna take two shots. We're gonna take two. Ooh, hoo, hoo, it's hitting my body. Ooh. Okay, so story number one is the embarrassing story I had with my upstairs neighbor. Now you guys are gonna be like, oh my God, what did Andrea say? What didn't I say is a better question. So this guy, we're literally getting out of our car, we had groceries, whatever, and this guy outside by the car, he's like, hey, do you guys live in that apartment? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we live over here. And he's like, do you have any problems with noise, like your upstairs neighbor? And I was like, oh my God, yes, all the time. So I'm like, oh my God, yeah. Dude, you don't understand, like the people upstairs, like what are they doing? And he's like, but is it like really loud? Like you guys have that issue, like it's loud. And I was like, 
It's loud. Like, I don't know, they're little girls, like, boom, 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 boom. Like, I, when I tell you that I just kind of, like, me despoje, I don't know what that is in English. Like, I just kind of, like, vomited and just told them everything I was feeling about my upstairs neighbors. And I was like, oh, my God, yeah. And sometimes when they're too loud, I go with my broom and go boom, 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 just so they can stop. And when I tell you that this man proceeded to tell me, this is what he said. He was like, Look, I just wanted to say I'm so sorry because my daughter is staying with me and I apologize for all of the noise. And I tell you, que pena, pena. I can't even, I can't even explain it. Like, I was so mortified that I had just talked so much shit to this poor human being. Like, poor man, didn't know me, I didn't know him, I had never seen him because he's always upstairs. And I was like, oh my god, yeah, so inconsiderate, like all this stuff. And my fiance was doing the same thing, he's like, oh my god, yeah, the noise, the noise. And we were just like, on and on and on and on, cotorra, just a parakeet. <laughs> And that man told us that it was not good i literally was like oh and then of course what are you gonna say after that you you just insulted the man and his little child right so we went in and we were like no no don't worry no it doesn't bother us no 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 you're okay <sighs> we literally walked into the house closed the door and we looked at each other like i'm telling you they were mute they were mute for about a week and now the little girl's running loose again so i don't feel that bad honestly because it's ridiculous so that was story number one. So story number two was when I was living with my mom and I went to throw out the trash and I literally, it must have been like two o'clock in the morning and I look over and I see my neighbor from across the way not moving on the floor, like laying down on the floor. And it wasn't like peacefully laying down, no, 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 like this guy just dropped. And I literally stood there and I was like, this is the first time a 22 year old at that time had seen somebody look pretty much dead. So I was like, oh, is he dead? Is he not? Is he moving? What do I do? I stared at him. Do I get close? Do I not? Is, is he in heaven? It was one of those like contemplation moments. And then I was like, gotta move quick, ran inside. And I told my stepdad because it was really like late at night. I don't even know what time it was. And I was like, ah, ah, I don't know how to say it, but I think the neighbor's dead. And he was like, what? And I was like, ah, he's not moving. He's not moving. He, did you push him? Did, like, did you mush him? Did you push him is what I meant to say. And I'm like, no, I didn't push him. Like, he's an old man. Like, I'm not gonna touch him. So whatever, my stepdad came out, whatever. Oh, I hit my head. The old man, I guess, had tripped or done something. Hit his head and didn't move. He couldn't get up. It was a mess. Had to call 911. So what is Andrea thinking? Oh my God, the firefighters are coming. Andrea, put on a sexy outfit. Like, hello, it's the movies, Andrea. The only time you find a hot man is when they come in a firefighter truck and they're coming to save some lives, right? So the, my, my stepdad really just tended to the old man. I was like, guys, I gotta go, like, I gotta go. I gotta go get ready. So they call 911, the old man's on the floor. My stepdad's taking care. I'm going inside to get dressed. Mind you, it's like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. It was a mess. I got so ready. I was like, oh my God, I might find my future husband. I was already dating my future husband, <laughs> but you know, you never know. So whatever, we're there and I'm getting ready. And I was like, okay, get rid of my PJs, put my hair up in a ponytail, gotta look cute. When I tell you that it was like the ugliest three firefighters I've ever seen in my life, when they opened that door and I was like, like it, it was like a horror film. Yeah, I'm here thinking, oh my God, I almost saved the life, God, like, come on, you're gonna send me somebody like as a reward because really I did a good deed. Good deed. I did save an old man's life. It was wonderful and I feel really good about that. But he didn't send me some beautiful firefighter from the freaking calendar, no. Like, what the fuck? You couldn't give me one? cute man to just kind of like I saved the life no it was like three firefighters that were on their way to retirement with like pot bellies I was like what you're coming to save this life so it was a mess I was disappointed I had saved the life but your girl was also trying to get a ring on her finger so that's what happened that's what happened I know my fiance is gonna be like we were dating for like more than five years yeah we were but you know what your girl wasn't sure if you were gonna put a ring on it, but he did. So that is the story. That sounds awful, I know, very superficial, but I was at that age. I'm a little bit matured now, not really, but you know, getting there. Ooh, you know what time it is. You know what time it is. When I go, ooh, it's because I know what's coming. My liver knows what's coming and I can't avoid it. I can't avoid it. <sighs> shot number three. If shot one and two weren't bad enough, 
Now we're gonna add a third one in. I almost gagged on the on the second shot. I hope you know. I'm gonna replay it. Yeah, that was Andrea about to like. <laughs> that was me. But anyway, <sighs> shot number three. Oh, can I like do it like that? Does that count? No. Some of you're gonna be like, girl, drink it. I know. I know. Oh, well, okay. Right there. Oh God, my poor insides. Okay. Oh. <coughs> Ooh. You know, I think I like tequila. I really, I really do. I really do. Oh my God, my goosebumps. My goosebumps had babies. They're multiplying. I've got chills. They're multiplying. And I'm losing control. Don't copyright me. Oh, power. That alcohol supplying. Ah, it's electrifying. Ah. Oh, Andrea, and that's what you like rum. But you know what it is? I like rum and Coke. I like rum and like a hurricane with like fruity shit. I don't like playing up shots of rum. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Oh. So story number three, let's not get sidetracked because the camera is going to overheat again and I might just throw it into the lake. Anyway, all right, so let's get into the third story. Story number three went a little like this. I was working at my old elementary school and I had gotten a job there as an activity leader. And I had been there literally only two to three weeks. I was getting to know the kids, whatever. I had the kids and it was awesome. And I would take them outside and we would do homework and activities and board games and all this stuff. So it was time for me to take them outside and play or whatever, um, like sports. And I told them, please don't run. I specifically said no running. What did they do? <laughs> Miss Andrea said don't run. I think she said run faster. Because little motherfuckers took off. Took off, took off, and they were gone. Gone, right? So I turned the corner and I was like, oh, you, Sally, I don't remember your name. You, I told you not to run, whatever. I was like still trying to figure out my job. And then all of a sudden, I was putting my crate down and I hear a scream, like from a horror film. And I was like, Oh my god, and everybody, all the kids stopped. Like, you know when like the kids kind of like, even when kids, you get their attention, you know shit was real. And I was like, oh my god, I was still putting my card down and like, you know, I don't even know my coworkers' names at this point. And I'm like, hey, hi, uh, uh, who, what happened? And I literally see like a bunch, all the kids from all the classes coming in like a swarm and I'm like, ooh, what happened? And I was like, please don't let that be my kid. Like, what happened? It was Andrea's kid from Andrea's class. The little child angel, I don't know what I just said. The little angel child of mine had run off to the monkey bars and had fallen and broken his arm. Now when I tell you that this poor child did not just fall off the monkey bars, like he fell off the monkey bars, broke his arm and the bone was coming out of his arm. Andrea does not do good with that like at all so i remember one of my co-workers picking it was this big dude i don't even know his name i still don't know his name he came up and he picked him up and he's like go to the office call call kenny which was my boss go get this this and i was like oh my god what just happened like it was in the matter of like not even three minutes of me like walking from the door to outside and this kid had completely like had a bone sticking out and I was like oh, okay who takes care of the kids where do I go uh, uh, panic so whatever the kids in the office and they're like Andrea can you hold his arm and I was like yeah I can hold his arm can you hold his arm the bone I, I forgot where I think it was sticking out through here and I literally my me and my soft mushy belly I was like you're gonna be great. Like I, I couldn't even contain myself. I was just like, mm, uh, yeah, just let's look, let's make eye contact, dude. I, I, I cannot look down. I can't, I can't even promise you that you're gonna be okay. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen to you. And then his mom came in, and this woman, if she watches my YouTube video, she's gonna know it was true, because she wanted to murder me. She was like, no, this is your fault, how irresponsible, la la la. She went off on me and I was like, oh my God. I was like, it's not my fault that your child does not know how to follow directions, bitch. Like, not my motherfucking fault, right? I shouldn't be cursing so much, I'm sorry. But, you know, like, it was one of those situations that it was like, squeeze me? 
I have been holding your son's arm together so that it's not like a noodle for the last 20 minutes and you're gonna come over here and yell at me because he does not know how to follow directions? So anyway, the kid ended up, I don't know if he, I don't think he had surgery, I think, I don't know what happened to him. I do not know what happened to this kid. All I know is that he disappeared, he went to the hospital, I was asking his friends the next day, like, oh my god, have you guys heard from him? Because you guys, you know, are on Instagram and you text each other now in third grade. And they were like, oh yeah, yeah, he's in the hospital, whatever, it's great, his mom hates you. I'm like, oh god, okay, great. And literally when the kid came back to school, I literally, I felt like I had done the kid wrong. Like, you know, like when you do somebody wrong and you're like, oh shit, yeah, bitch, I did you wrong. That's how I felt. And I was like, oh my God, Louis, are you okay? Yeah. The mother had him removed from my class. It hurt my feelings a little bit because the kid was super nice and he was a super sweet kid and it wasn't my fault. Like you're an irresponsible ass on the monkey bars. But you know, it wasn't my fault. So yeah, long story short, I felt horrific. I said horrific. <laughs> That's a, a word, horrific. Ding. Anyway, so I felt really bad, but that's what happened. Kid broke his arm, I had to hold the bone, and it was it was a mess. I didn't really like hold the bone. Oh, it was just hold the arm, make sure that uh, ambulance came, pick him up. Mother yelled at me, mother wanted to destroy me. And then they changed him out of my class, and I stayed at that job for like three years. So that's the three stories. Neighbor, the other neighbor, I should say that he's okay. He was very thankful. Um, there was no reward. No, no, no. It wasn't like, hey, you know, my son works for a cruise line. Maybe I'll hook you up with the cruise. It was like, no, thank you for not leaving me for dead and saving my life. Have a good one. Not even like a $20 to Starbucks. Fuck. Save somebody's life. It was okay. Didn't want anything in return. But now that I think about it five years later, I'm like, uh, really? Somebody come save my life. I'll be like, uh. I can buy you a scooter. I can't afford a car. I can buy you a scooter and do monthly installments, okay? And then the child with the broken bone. So that is the episode for today, human beings. I was gonna say lovely people, but human beings came out. But you guys are beautiful people. You're lovely human beings. And that is the episode. I know that it wasn't as funny, but... can be funny all the time. Next Friday, three shots, three stories. If my best friend is willing to do a video with me, then maybe, just maybe, you guys will see it um, next Friday. But if not, then <laughs> you're just gonna be stuck with me again because nobody wants to make a video with me. <laughs> True story, everybody's shy. I don't wanna be on camera. Don't get me started. Anyway, hope you guys have a lovely evening. Thank you for tuning in to Three Shots and Three Stories. If you like this video, please like and subscribe because Andrea will continue to drink alcohol, get tipsy, and tell you more in store. I don't know what I just said. Three interesting stories about my life is what I meant to say. And there's mosquitoes. <sighs> yeah, goodbye. We are. Fuck are the post it notes? Did I swallow them? Did my butt swallow them? Um. Those are the three stories for three shots and three Sundays. Uh, no, it's not Sunday. Bro, oh, yeah. I'm gonna name you Frederick. Frederick, I've had enough. The bird has now been de deemed Frederick, and if she's a mama, Frederica. I feel like George of the Jungle. Ugh, oh, I just, you know, whatever. That, oh, somebody's gonna like me. Hello. An extreme, oh. <laughs> I always get this bird. I don't know if this bird like laughs at my stories or has a good time, has like front row seats. I don't know. I'm sorry for the bird. Every video I post, you're gonna hear that stupid bird. Anyway, I actually hit the level of happiness in my life. I shouldn't say in my life, I'm a happy person, but I just, the level of happiness after alcohol, it's just wonderful. People are gonna be like, oh, this girl's an alcoholic because she waits for every Friday to, <laughs> to drink alcohol. No, bitch, it's Thursday. I'll have a drink tomorrow. <laughs> Who waits for Friday? Gosh. I don't even know what I was gonna say. I'm a little sweaty. My hair's getting a little curly. The pits smell wonderful. Andrea, do not say that. <gasps> Soda lime rum. Yes. Are you done? Are you done? Because you were here and now you're over there. What do you want? Do you want me to bring you bread? Do you want me to make you a nest? And then you have the people playing tennis. The people playing tennis. I understand you guys are exercising. I'm currently exercising my right and my freedom to drink over the age of 21. 
Anyway, beautiful human beings, I will leave you with that. The alcohol has officially hit my system. I am feeling fantastic, as should you, because it is Friday if you are watching this, and it is Friday, so go enjoy your life. Detox, don't, I can't tell you to detox because your girl's drinking Bacardi straight from the bottle. I didn't drink it straight from the bottle.